Hi everyone, my name is Maqdad. I'm from uh, Career DC. Uh, welcome to another uh, online session of Career and Coffee. Uh, today uh, we have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Rassan. Rassan has a very big profile, but I will try to be brief. Rassan, he is into social intelligence and entrepreneurship. He's a social intelligence and entrepreneurship coach. He's, uh, he received MENA Be uh, Best Personal Award, Personal uh, Brand Award. He's got 10 years in aviation, oil and gas, and SME development. I personally know Hassan about 16, uh, for 16 years now. We met in New Zealand when I was working in software and uh, Hassan was studying aviation at Massey University in, uh, in New Zealand. And after that, Hassan went back to Oman I moved to Australia, but we kept in touch. We kept in touch all of these years. Uh, and I think one of the major uh, things that we have in common is that it's our interest in entrepreneurship. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Rassan, for joining us today. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, good morning, Maqdad, and uh, oh, good morning in Oman, and uh, I think it's good afternoon or good evening good at afternoon uh, time Australia. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, and good day to uh, our Australian audience. Um, uh, thank you for uh, hosting this, and thank you for uh, arranging this, Maqdad. It's been uh, it's been a while; we haven't been in touch. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, my name is Hassan Fadl. I'm a, a social intelligence and entrepreneurship coach. And uh, I've been a, a two times TEDx speaker uh, uh, on similar topics, social intelligence or emotional intelligence and uh, leadership. And I've been passionate about entrepreneurship. As Maqdad have mentioned, I've uh, started off with uh, aviation as an aircraft engineer. And uh, I've moved into, uh, uh, I've worked with uh, uh, the national carrier uh, Oman Air for uh, around six years. Uh, but during that time, I was moonlighting and uh, uh, working as a coach and consulting SMEs and uh, running around any event to do with uh, entrepreneurship uh, in Oman since uh, they started off uh, uh, to build that culture around entrepreneurship and uh, small business enterprises uh, uh, since 2010. And uh, yeah, when I found an opportunity to move out into uh, a career that's uh, closer to that, I went uh, moved into in-country value, uh, which is local content development. Uh, that's the Imani name for it. Um, uh, so uh, I've moved into that. I've been working with supporting local businesses, local, small uh, and medium business uh, enterprises and entrepreneurs uh, developing um, uh, uh, programs for developing entrepreneurs, mentorship programs, and um, uh, uh, product development pro programs. Uh, I've been doing that for uh, about six more, six or more years now, <laughs> uh, almost seven. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it's been a fun ride. Um, uh, been learning a lot. I've been uh, talking to that just before we started uh, about the last program we did, uh, uh, especially with the with COVID, uh, where we are we we were not able to meet people in person. Uh, we're developing devel delivering um, uh, mentorship uh, for uh, twenty five uh, female entrepreneurs in Amman. And we uh, managed to deliver around a hundred over hundred one hundred sessions in uh, the span of three months uh during that and it was all online so thank thank god for zoom <laughs> so yeah that's a little bit about myself uh so Great. please uh, pleased to be here and uh, glad to see you guys thank you very much Rassan. i um, you are uh, an expert in a very specific area uh, so you are a social intelligence and entrepreneurship coach so I heard of inter entrepreneurship coaches, and uh, but this is very specific. Can you define what is social intelligence? All right. So social intelligence is um, part of emotional intelligence, which is the, the social part of emotional intelligence, which is social awareness, being aware of the social 
scenario and what's happening around you and how to handle and manage these relationships and how to manage relationships with others to come out with a successful outcome. So that's uh, 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 the brief definition of what social intelligence is. Uh, when you're talking about emotional intelligence, there are two faculties of it. Part of it is the inter internal awareness, being aware of your own emotions and managing your own emotions. And there is a social aspect, which is man uh, being aware of the social scenario and other people's emotions. So this is what we're looking at. And my interest uh, was uh, uh, in this topic um, uh, was heightened more. Uh, I mean, I'm a master practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming, which was the start uh, into looking into uh, more depth into social intelligence and was inspired by Malcolm Gladwell's uh, uh, book, Outliers, where uh, he uh, specifically talks uh, extensively about social intelligence as uh, a cornerstone in success and why successful people who are really successful and exceptionally successful were successful. And it was found that uh, in studying uh, different um, uh, cases that uh, social intelligence was a really important aspect to that. Um, and it was the, uh, as, as I would say, is uh, the tool or the faculty that would help you get away with murder without uh, uh, getting caught or without getting blamed for it, just because people like you too much. <laughs> so it, it, does, it does make a difference. I'm not promoting anyone to go and murder anyone and, and be socially intelligent and just get away from it. No, we're not saying that. But we're saying that um, it can really get you out of difficult situations and can really improve your relationships with others and can really help you uh, do better at your work as a leader, as an entrepreneur, and as an influencer. Rasad, this is a very interesting, it's a very interesting area. I, how do you work with your clients? How do you work with coaching entrepreneurs? And I, I think, like, how do you deliver this content to them? How do you deliver advice to them? Because this area, like when you explain it to me, I think is vast now. It's not something that I can box in in a, in a program. So how do you work with people? Yeah, uh, there are two things again, uh, just to clarify. Well, part of what I do, we do, we work with social intelligence, uh, whether it's for entrepreneurs, for corporate clients, and for individuals who want to improve their uh, power of influence and their uh, ability to influence others and to have better relationships. And at the same time, we work with entrepreneurs on entrepreneurial matters, which is also a, an area on itself. So we do uh, deliver uh, coaching and training in, in both these areas. And sometimes it happens to be that these areas normally intersect. Because when it comes to social, in, uh, social intelligence, uh, we're looking at um, leadership. I mean, people who want to improve their leadership, their sales skills, because social intelligence also affects your sales, especially if you're working with people. and and in business, whether we like it or not, we are working with people, whether we're leaders, whether they are our employees or they are our clients. So it's really important for us to improve our social skills to influence them. So uh, uh, we do work either through providing consultancy uh, consultation sessions, uh, whether uh, right now we offer those online, uh, so we can access uh, people all around the world who are interested in that. And we do deliver that in a face-to-face -face manner uh, by uh, through meeting some of our clients who contact us directly. And uh, we do deliver uh, training workshops, whether, uh, again, online or uh, in person. And uh, that's that's mainly the areas that we, we, we or the ways that we do it. We also develop, deliver um, uh, development programs for organizations, whether for their staff or for um, companies that uh, small businesses that they want to sponsor. So uh, yeah, that's very much what we what we do here. So what I understand here is that you have your own programs, workshops with a curriculum that can be delivered to organizations. And then if it's, if you're working, for example, with one-on-one, -on -one, it can be customized for that business. Exactly. For exactly. that business specifically. 
Mm, like, exactly. Yeah. 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 And because what we find uh, working with a lot of entrepreneurs that um, uh, what we do is a lot of troubleshooting. Uh, mm. Some of them would um, uh, come to us with uh, specific problems that they're having in their uh, businesses. And uh, normally a, a good starting point, I mean, looking at it from an entrepreneurial uh, point, uh, is starting with having clear business model or a business model canvas, which helps us to first define, okay, what are, where, where are the gaps? Do you really have any gaps? And then if we found and uh, pinpointed that the issue is to do with social intelligence, we'll move into, or their marketing, we can brush up on social intelligence and work with them on that. Um, this is for businesses. And if it was for individuals who want to improve their leadership skills or improve their communication skills um, uh, or influence uh, with others, um, they would come to us seeking a specific uh, uh, or discussing a specific challenge and or we would discuss with them okay what is the challenge what are the challenges that you're facing and what are you seeking to improve and we'll set out uh, 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 we'll look at which areas that they can work on um, and then we will set up a plan where we can coach them on what can they start applying and doing for us to follow up on the next uh, session and the, uh, if they're interested in a coaching uh, process. Can you, give us, uh, can you give us an example, whether it's working with an individual or an organization, where you worked with that person or organization, and you found out that, you know, they, there are some areas that are related to social intelligence that this person or this organization needs to work on? Okay, all right. Um, uh, one of the things... Uh we're looking at and i'll give you this is a very common example and it's interesting because it, it has a little bit of a spin um to do more with social media of one of a few of the organizations we actually worked with some, a few of the social uh, of the uh, small businesses here uh we found that uh, a lot of small businesses when they're trying to promote their business and this is where the social part comes into it and people sometimes miss out on this part when they're, when they're trying, and the most powerful tool right now for small businesses, at least here in Oman, I'm speaking in Oman and the region, is social media and especially Instagram. You find that uh, people on the gram or these companies on the gram, what they try uh, tend to do is just post products and post offers all the time. And they do, and they forget the most important pa part of social media, which is the social part. <laughs> so... The whole idea it's, of social it's media about is the customer. It's not just about them all the time. Exactly, it's ah. all about your customer. It's all about the mm -mm. being socializing with your customers. Mm. So uh, one of the cases that we had and was actually a, a, a good friend of mine who's in uh, business, and uh, uh, he was facing a challenge with my social account is not being interactive. I've been posting posts and posting mm. my products, and it was a, a car spare parts. Um, and I've been posting uh, basically pictures of the products, but they, he hasn't been socializing much. And I told him, okay, let's try this. This is the first experiment we're going to mm. do. And we're just sitting on coffee and talking about this and trying to solve this issue. Uh, so I told him, how about this? Let's put some car keys on the table, a couple of cups of coffee, and just take a picture of that and say, we're having an entrepreneurial discussion about uh, business and about the challenges of business. And he puts that immediately within 15 minutes, he starts getting a lot of likes, a lot of interactions on the, on the account because it was more of a social post this time as opposed Interactive. to- Interactive. Exactly, instead mm. of a picture of a bumper. You know, it's like, well, what am I gonna yeah. do with a bumper on, on Instagram? And it's like, unless you have a bumper fetish, fetish then that's a different story. So. <laughs> But that's uh, that's what uh, uh, what uh, that was the start of uh, 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 the solution, and what I normally advise um, uh, entrepreneurs uh, in this case because because it's all about socializing. You need to interact with your customers, with your clients online. You need to um, add value to them in a way that they can relate to and also entertain them at the same time. So we normally try to advise our entrepreneurs to try to use three types of posts when they're posting. We're talking about entertainment, 
So this is the number one type of post. That, and the number one reason why people go to Instagram, they want to be entertained. They want to uh, they want to spend a good time. They want to go away from the troubles that they have in the real life and go into the virtual life to try to enjoy and forget their troubles. Uh, so entertainment, either via something fun, posting something funny, something uh, uh, a joke related to your business. It doesn't have to do, to do that. And then you have educational and informational. So educational is either by you uh, educating them about your products, services, or educating them about what you offer or, or what are the challenges that they might not know that they actually have, that you can solve them for them, or by posting educational informational material and this is also something that we've applied with this friend of mine uh, where we started posting content on how to use certain parts what's the difference between this part and this and that part and how this part or this product can benefit your car uh, in, a, in a better way so by posting this educational material or info informational material this actually helps build uh, content uh, helps you build content and helps add value to your clients so your clients will be following you because you're adding value to them that they're not paying for but then they will be uh, finding the benefit of uh, following you and the last part is again is posting your offers and offering them your services so it's like okay you start with entertaining educating and then try and put a little bit of a ah how about you buy this product from us since we do all this. Since you like it so much, this is a product that, you, that you're gonna like. And the thing is, I mean, what we're, why we're saying this is even with social media today and people being, um, uh, I mean, moving more into it, um, uh, still people are uh, following companies and buying from companies today, not ju just because the product is the cheapest or uh, it's the uh, most valuable or, uh, uh, but it's more about what that company represents to them and how they relate with that company. So if people can relate to you and feel uh, and identify with you as a company and feel that human aspect of your company, they are going to buy from you and be loyal to you. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's where social intelligence gets and comes into the picture. That's very valuable uh, advice, uh, Hassan. Um, my wife is a content manager, and she's been talking about, you know, it's all about them, the customers. And uh, she's been telling me a lot about this because, um, uh, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, but I don't know everything about everything. You know, I'm still learning. We're all learning, you know. Exactly. Uh, and it's very, it's, very, uh, it's a very interesting concept. I see a lot of entrepreneurs talk a lot about themselves, about their products, about their services, all about me, me. But then you need to engage people. You need to uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, give people an incentive to be on your social media platform or your website or even buy your service like... Uh, so I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they forget about this. That's it's the customer that is important. It's not just their service or their product. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I always say this to a lot of entrepreneurs that, um, you see, business is not about you or the products that you offer. Even if your products are the best ever specs-wise, it's all about your customer. Customer is king, mm. customer is number one. So, um, and uh, there's one thing that we do uh, using uh, the concept of value engineering. Um, we always start with the customer in whatever we do. And I always start with customer profiling, that you need to understand your customers mm -hmm. so well, understand to the point of understanding their feelings, their needs, their wants, and their pain. Understand what's, what, what, the, what are they yearning to? Understand their pain, understand what they're feeling when they're at any given moment of the, of the day or at the moment of wanting to buy something. Even if your if your uh, 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 your business is an app or a website where people are going to go through it, understand the customer experience and how they feel when they're interacting with your uh, with your app or your 
website. And that's a very important part to it. I mean, even when it comes to social media profiles, if you're looking at an organized profile that looks good and makes you feel good looking at it, people are more likely to follow you and to <laughs> interact with you than a profile that looks a little messy and people go like, what? <laughs> so even to that extent, people are, uh, uh, you always have to think about the customer. I mean, as selfish as it may be uh, today, uh, and people are moving into a more of an I, I, I culture, and people are more uh, uh, becoming, even if we're talking in the sense that it sounds kind of self-centered, but it's more selfless if, for businesses to actually focus on their uh, customers, and so it's not wrong to do that. And your customers in return are going to feel loyal to you because you're actually doing something, you are actually caring about them. It's about care, um, uh, it's care that makes the difference uh, to the customers, and I think that's that's uh, what it's all about. It's it's um, uh, really really caring about your customers, and that actually builds trust with them. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember King, King Blanchard in his um, uh, ABCD uh, trust model uh, has connectedness as one of the uh, cornerstones. Or, or the four keys of trust, uh, which is all about genuine care about your customers. And uh, this is what, what uh, and genuine care about others in order for you to establish trust. So if you care really about them and you really show them that we actually care about you, the customer, we're not, we don't really, it's not about just making money out of you. It's about really caring about your needs and money will follow. And that's how you make it. This is very good, Rassani. Uh, what this means is that social social intelligence is not just about you know face to face communication or being around people. Because what you're talking about here is internet. So you're talking about digital yeah. forms of social yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, intelligence. I mean, social intelligence. I mean, it, it's all about the person. It's all about others. It's understanding how others. Uh, uh, work and how others uh, uh, interact. I mean, uh, I mean, before COVID, where we where people uh, used to interact normally, I used to think of social intelligence more on on the human interaction level, on the face to face level. Yeah. But uh, with time, impression people, I got yeah, when I yeah, when I yeah. heard, you know and, when I and thought it about is, it. it is. Yeah. That's how it actually started. But the thing is now with uh, with the new norm, with people being more uh, online and uh, businesses are moving on into the online. Uh, 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 and to online platforms, we are uh, having to uh, face the reality that we need to make our online platforms more user-friendly, more social, and uh, uh, more socially intelligent. And uh, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, uh, and uh, let's remember, uh, I always say this in uh, social intelligence training, that uh, we are, um, when, work with, when working with humans, humans are not machines they have emotions and uh, emotions are uh, can be the uh, catalyst that can either increase your uh, can either decrease your performance so low even if you had everything that adds up and it's not like one plus one equals two um, with emotions either one plus one equals 0 0.4 or one plus one can equal 10 because if you influence people with emotions in a very good manner, people are going to give you their best and people are going to be loyal to you and they're going to go the extra mile in order for them to give you extra value. And that's what we're trying to promote, that it's more about the humans. Let's think about the human aspect in order for us to maximize the value. I mean, working and whether we're working in organizations, uh, or working with clients, this is what it's all about. Actually, that brings me into a topic maybe we can talk about uh, a little bit more, which is um, emotional power, um, uh, which is um, uh, which was the topic of my first um, uh, TEDx talk, where um, the way I look at emotional power, especially when it comes to leadership and influence, if you want to influence others and you want to have a positive impact on others, you'll have to remember that um, the power of your influence is directly to related to two things. First, how intense you can create of in emotions, like the intensity of the emotion that you can create with others. So if you can influence someone with a very intense, deep emotion, then chances are you're going, you're going to influence this person at a deeper level. If you think of any 
leader or any influencer or any person who impacted your life at a deeper sense. Just think of any person, just pick any person and think about the emotional interaction you had with them. They made you laugh. They made you, you either shared laughs with them, shared cries, shared deep moments, sad moments. They didn't just uh, brush on the surface when they interacted with you. They actually went into your depth. And that's probably part of why we're here talking today. We, you remember me and we remember each other Correct. because yes. of the good times that we spent together. Yes. And you find that this is what influence is all about. So this is the number one aspect. This is the, the uh, first part of the equation. Second part of the equation is the number of people you can actually influence with that intensity. So the more people you can influence with that intensity, with that deep emotion, the more the circle of your influence and the more emotional power you have over people. So if you think about great leaders that had great impact on people throughout history, you'll find that those leaders manage to influence their people and influence people at a deep emotional level and influence so many people with that deep emotional uh, uh, intensity. So, and that's what emotional power is all about. So if you wanted to, uh, if, uh, for good lead, for leaders who want to be uh, uh, better at uh, influencing others and influencing their employees, influencing uh, their followers, it's all about creating that genuine, deep emotional intensity and maximizing the number of people you can create it with. So uh, that's, 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 emotion, uh, uh, that's emotional power for you, yeah? Would you say that most successful entrepreneurs have a high level of emotional power at all times? Is it a must to be successful? Uh, is, is it a must have skill to be successful in business? Yeah, you see, according to what 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 we're seeing in, in the world today and what we're seeing, what we've seen in uh, uh, I mean, uh, even in Martin Gladwell's uh, work, Outliers, you find that it is it is the case. Uh, you find that um, if you think of any um, uh, successful entrepreneur out there that 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 you that you actually like, uh, <laughs> most of the time you actually like them for what they're doing, and they will be posing for a specific cause for something that means something to people and this is where you're creating emotions with people because it's about meaning emotions are linked to meaning and values to people so if it's something of value and meaning to people you're influencing their emotions you'll find that um, uh, i mean think of like give me any example of any entrepreneur that you're thinking about and think about what they do and what they represent and what meaning are they posing to the world and uh, you'll find that a lot of people will uh, their success will be actually linked uh, linked in a way to that emotion and and or that their business is built around that emotion uh, take mark zuckerberg for example might not have been the most uh, socially intelligent uh, intelligent at a point of time but his business is all about emotions and the social part which is making people connect to each other and uh, uh, stay in touch and share information share uh, things about themselves or even uh, you know rant online if they wanted to you know share how they're feeling you know um, but again uh, with time we find that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is is starting to get more uh, emotionally and socially intelligent and trying to work more on that aspect. I mean, with, with time, with the growth, you find people develop that with time. Um, you see, one of the reasons people might, uh, uh, like a lot of uh, successful entrepreneurs, um, uh, I mean, one of the uh, interesting examples was, was Richard Branson. Uh, Richard Branson is uh, is an interesting character and, and he does a lot of uh, fun things to his staff, uh, works with his staff and uh, meaningful things to his staff and to people around the world. And that's what why people like him. Uh, so that's one, one example uh, we can think of. Uh, but again, I mean, um, uh, what is success? Are we talking about uh, only money or are we talking about what, uh, how people are remembering you and what you represent to people. Uh, I mean, uh, that's to me, success is about what legacy are you leaving behind? And that's what, what really matters. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, Rassan, I think this is uh, an area that we didn't uh, look into in career development in general. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, I think a lot of our audience at Career DC uh, are young people. So these are young people that are either studying at uni level, so higher education, uh, yeah. or fresh graduates that are looking for jobs, or young entrepreneurs that are in the early stages, early stages of their uh, startups. So, so you think, like, what kind of advice you would give to this age group? So you're talking about people between 18 to 26, 30, mm -hmm. within that range, yeah, yeah. between 18 and 30, let's say. What kind of advice you would give them? Now, a lot of these people are born, you know, with, you know, computers and technology and everything. And, and especially this year, maybe the social interaction is minimal. So what kind of uh, advice you would give to this age group? Yeah, uh, I mean, this age group, especially at these uh, challenging times, we're uh, uh, not able to socially interact with people as much as we used to. Um, uh, I mean, looking back at my days at uni, uh, one of the things that helped me a lot was um, uh, doing a lot of extracurricular activities where I had to interact with others. Um, I was a shy boy at school. You know? I was I was not the most outspoken person. I was uh, a shy guy. I I wouldn't have thought ever that I would be, you know, doing public speeches and uh, talking on TEDx <laughs> any, uh, at that age. Uh, I was the quietest kid at the class. Uh, to the point that some teachers go like, oh, you, you're even in the class? We did not uh, notice that you're here, <laughs> you know? Um, but again... I wouldn't uh, imagine this. I didn't think of, uh, that you were <laughs> like this before. Uh, well, I used to be... <laughs> but even but when I met is... you at, in New Zealand, when you were at uni, you were very involved in like student activities yeah, and yeah. association, and you were very active. Yeah, yeah. No, because uh, at a point of time, when, when, once I finished school, I was um, interested in the idea of leadership, what leadership is all about. And um, uh, at uni, then uh, this was a chance for me to go, okay, now I need to do something. Now I need to start forming my personality and, and doing something, and making something meaningful here. And uh, I benefited a lot from a lot of the workshops that were around. It's, it's the best time for you to start learning and honing your skills. Don't stop learning ever. Whatever you can get, you can get your hands on, whether it's online training, face-to-face -face training, whether it's reading books, audio books. Just, just get into it. Explore. I mean, the first process is exploration, and the first step is exploration. You need to explore first many ideas in order for you to form an opinion and to form um, uh, an interest. And then you'll start discovering that, okay, this is an area that I'm really interested in. But in order to develop your uh, social skills, one thing you can do is, uh, and this is an advice that Stephen Covey no normally gives, in order for you to maximize your learning, is to teach whatever you learn to someone else, uh, to uh, uh, one person within one week and to five people within one month. So you basically have to, uh, you're forced, you put a target for yourself that you need to teach someone whatever new thing that you've learned in order to get it across to someone else. Uh, that will force you to actually interact with someone um, and that will force you to start forming some social skills and uh, uh, get away from that social awkwardness. And at the same time, that will help you uh, develop the skills that you need to uh, uh, and maybe help uh, force you to go and uh, explore some courses on social intelligence and uh, uh, or emotional intelligence or communication or whatever skill you need to develop to influence others. And that's the uh, uh, the <laughs> number one advice I would give. Uh, also, as much as possible, uh, I mean, it's something that a lot of people sometimes miss out on is the idea of all, whenever I'm dealing with others, try to always think of putting yourself in their in their shoes. Think of how would things look from the other person's perspective. Just try to stand in their perspective. Because once you try to switch the way you're looking at things and trying to understand where a person is coming from and what, why are they saying what they're saying, you'll start to notice that, okay, wait a minute, maybe I need to consider that. And that would push you to the point of, 
creating a win-win situation. I mean, if we're talking about this, this is this is all about uh, Stephen Covey's. I mean, Stephen Covey's seven habits is, um, uh, I mean, three of the seven habits are social victory skills or uh, skills to do with uh, social intelligence, if you think about it. And uh, I do include this in uh, the workshops that I do. And it's uh, the idea of creating a win-win situation. That's number one. Also listening to understand, listening uh, um, in order to understand basically seeking to understand before being understood and finally creating synergy whenever you're interacting with people try to look at how can i maximize the output or how, how can i maximize the value for all of us for all of us through this interaction and how can i explore explore the areas of uh, uh power with uh, within others i mean if you spend time to explore others more and to give time to go more in depth and to what people are all about and what they're good at and what are their skills, whether technical or just social skills or uh, just their own uh, latent talents that haven't been discovered yet. That will actually make you understand people in a, in a much deeper sense and make you discover that, okay, I have someone who has a skill that can be beneficial to, uh, to our business uh, in an indirect way. And an example of that is, um, one of my colleagues, uh, uh, she joined us uh, a couple of years back, and uh, uh, she joined as an uh, as an analyst um, uh, into supply chain. But uh, uh, we discovered that she has a skill for graphic design, and she saved us a lot of time, effort, and uh, money on uh, designing uh, some of the presentations, some of the materials that we need to uh, get across to uh, for awareness programs to uh, the local market and uh, that's that's something that uh, is of value we wouldn't have known that if we didn't actually try to discover and spend time and to be social with her in order for us to discover that hey wait a minute she actually has some interesting skills how about you do this for us yeah uh, so it's it's a matter of trying to explore people as humans uh, it's all about us being human before being um, uh, uh, technical people or before pay, being uh, job titles. It's all about, about the human part. Uh, so whether you're a student or an employee or someone who's getting into a job uh, uh, soon or you're an entrepreneur who's starting a business, always remember that it's all about the human part. Always remember the human part whether within your employees, with your colleagues or with uh, your clients. It's all about the human part. Look at every human as a human and not a number. Um, uh, a lot of businesses fail today uh, with, uh, because they're looking at uh, people as numbers. And it's not about numbers, it's all about the, the human part. Let's let's connect at a deeper level. level yeah. So this, what you are talking about here, Hassan, is very practical. So it's not something very, that's general. It, it can be like, you know, this is what I'm trying to get to here. Uh, this, these, these steps can be actually implemented. It can be done in yeah. steps, you know, like, you know, you can listen to people, you know, that you can learn something and teach it to others. Uh, yeah. You know that you can be open and talk about your skills to others and listen to them when they talk about their skills. So these are practical things that people can learn regardless exactly. of their situation. So we're talking about here university students, for example, you know, graduates or entrepreneurs, these skills can apply to, to all of them, uh, exactly, if, yeah. but they need to take these steps. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that's that's what we're saying. I mean, uh, people sometimes when you're talking about social intelligence or emotional intelligence, people think that it's 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 all mushy, bushy, and it's yes, some yeah. sort of magic, you know, that you <laughs> that, yeah. you, that yeah. you need to uh, that doesn't make sense. But if you think about it, it's all very practical, and it's yes. all uh, it's all about committing to actually follow the steps. It's it's. There's no cutting corners. That's something that we have to uh, have in mind. But we need to build habits uh, for success for the long term. And part of the habits that we need to build is those habits for interacting properly in a human way with others. And what we find that, uh, like, if, if we're talking about just listening, I mean, listening itself is one of the most powerful techniques in connect with, connecting with others. 
challenges a lot of people want to speak they want to be heard everyone wants to be heard because i mean again we we've talked about the i i i culture and everyone what it thinks that it's all about themselves but if you take the extra if you go the extra mile and take the uh, the uh, step and the initiative of just listening first being the first one to listen and saying hey how about you tell me first and explain to me and tell me about how you feel even and I will listen until I fully understand. I'll follow with you until I fully understand and follow uh, and, and then come back to you. And that would make a big difference. I mean, Virginia Satir, uh, a renowned psychologist, said that uh, relationships are about communication. So if, if you don't have communication, you don't have a relationship. So if it's all about, if you can improve your, communica- your communication and your listening, um, to go into a deeper level of listening and understanding, to understand not just the words that are being said, but the emotions that the words are being said with and the background of where this person is coming from and why are they saying this, then you would really, it will really make a difference in your life and other people's lives. And uh, uh, one advice, I mean, I can share with you one of the uh, techniques that we uh, also uh, promote, and this has been uh, mentioned in the uh, book Outliers by Macklin Gladwell also, um, is all about uh, the S-slant technique, which is S-S-L-A-N-T. The S-slant technique is about uh, the following. First, you smart when someone is speaking to you if you're uh, uh, if anyone is talking to you if anyone is uh, 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 having a conversation with you do the following first uh, sit up or stand up if they're standing up you stand up if they're sitting if uh, uh, if they're uh, talking to you, sit up so don't slouch and sit to, to the back just sit in an attentive manner that gives a very positive message to the other person that you are attentive and you're interested in what they have to do, uh, what they have to say, that you're paying attention to what they have to say. And then smile. Smiling gives a very positive indication to the other person that you are interested in them, that you are happy to see them, and you are really agreeing with them and you're not disagreeing with them. However, when it comes to smiling, make sure that the person is not really talking about something really sad that or <laughs> misfortunate that happened to them, because that would be rude. <laughs> uh, so so uh, gauge your smile a bit. Uh, then uh, listen. So listen attentively to whatever is being uh, told to you. A is for asking. Ask questions follow-up questions and probing questions. Try to ask more. If they talk about something, ask them, ah, so this is what you're saying. Oh, so you're saying this and this and that. Also, what really, what happened after that? So what happened? That shows that you're really paying attention. You're really interested and engaged in the story or what's being told. And the person will go like, oh yeah, I like this person. They're asking, they want to know more. They like me. (laughs) So that also makes a difference. Um, And uh, nod with your head, nodding with... uh, nodding your head that you're saying with a yes uh, showing that uh, you're agreeing with the person and that also sinks the other person you'll find and this is a sales technique that uh, sometimes is used for salespeople when they're trying to convince someone with an idea they keep nodding their head "Ah, so this is what you want and the other person will start nodding their head once you get that both are nodding their heads together you know that okay there is synchronicity now and you can actually influence the person and that person is ready to be influenced that that person is, is ready to accept from you what you what you will have to say also so always remember nodding your head and finally track with your eyes so whatever if the person is moving just keep engaged with the person engaged with their movement engaged with whatever they they're trying to do and one thing that we want to try to avoid and this is of course it's a given but we need to say this, try, try to avoid not, not looking at your phone or looking somewhere else because you need to track that person with your eyes. So this gives, uh, applying these techniques gives a very powerful impact to uh, the other person. It uh, gives, uh, really influences your relationships, really influences the other person who's this, uh, who's, who you're communicating with. And uh, we do this experiment uh, uh, in the workshops that we do on social intelligence. Uh, we do, do uh, a, group exp- uh, <laughs> a group experiment where uh, we choose a speaker from each group. 
And uh, that speaker will uh, go out of the room uh, and, uh, in order for them to uh, uh, speak to the group. I'll uh, tell the speakers that, okay, you need to think of something that you speak for around three minutes uh, nonstop and try to convince others and make uh, the audience listen to you while, while you speak. While they're outside, I instruct the audience and instruct the teams to do the total opposite of the S-LAN technique, which is really painful if you think about the total opposite. So you're not, you're not uh, sitting up, you're not smiling, you're not listening, you're not asking questions, you're not nodding with your head, and you're not tracking with your eyes. So that's like total cutoff. Yeah? <laughs> so when the speakers come and they try to speak, they find that they get a really difficult time. It's very painful for the speakers, but at the same time, what we notice is it's also painful for the listeners because most people are actually nice and they really want to listen. You know, so they really want to be nice and to try to listen, to smile and be nice. And when they're working against their nature, especially if they're that person was sitting with them for a few hours in the, in the workshop and they're, it's like they're starting to get really to like that person to, to build some form of uh, a relationship with, the, with their colleague. And it's like, it's really hard. Or if, you, if they're work colleagues and they, they're really good on good terms, you know, it's like, well, that's really rude. I'm really, I feel bad doing that to you. Um, and that's what we actually find out of that. It's, it's, um, it's the opposite of that that really hurts people. And if you actually engage people and follow this technique, it actually improves your relationships. And that's uh, that's that's uh, that's a uh, that's a free freebie today. <laughs> so. Thank you very much, Hassan. This is this is uh, this is very. These are very valuable advices. I mean, uh, these can be applied as well to interviews. So we get we have exactly. a lot of interns that we train them on how to behave in Indeed. interviews. And Indeed. you know, there are certain things that are very specific, but you know, listening is a very important one, you know, that you mentioned. Um, yeah. you know, again, looking at the person and engaging with them, not being distracted. So these are maybe okay, simple things and everyone thinks, okay, we, we know about these, but you really need to take them seriously because Especially in the field where we are, we work with young people and these people, they have the education, but they don't have the work experience yet. Mm -hmm. They haven't been into, uh, many of them haven't been to a real workplace, but they have the theory, they, they studied, they have the degrees. And, but, uh, so, so that when they go to the interview, whatever they learned at uni, they, you know, the, 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 the potential host company uh, for them, they don't, they don't ask them as many technical questions. They are more interested in their personality because they, these people exactly. they are just looking for, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just the first door, you know, the first, the first opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these and personal that's, skills that's, are very yeah. important for them. Exactly. And as you mentioned, you know, speaking of interviews and job interviews, it's 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 a fact and it's uh, something that. Uh, a lot of people need to know that um, uh, when you go when you go to an interview, you've already checked all the technical criteria initially, but they want to know if they really can work with you, if they're really gonna like you enough to work with you and feel that okay, we can actually identify with the person and we can work with this person wouldn't feel awkward and we won't face any problem working with this person. And it's about more about knowing you as a person. Uh, uh, that you go to that interview. People really want to know you as a person and know that you have the right communication skills and you have the right attitude to, to work with. So if you apply this technique and you actually use it in an interview, you can imagine the immense connection that you're going to build and establish with the, uh, with the uh, uh, people at the interview. And uh, chances are, they're going to like you. Correct. And that's what we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hassan, yeah. thank you very much uh, for joining us today. These advices yeah, are very back. valuable. I learned a lot from you today. Uh, these are very specific uh, steps that can be done. We all need them regardless of our age or our work situation. Uh, so I hope that we will be able to see you again on another session. You are learning a lot That's every time I meet you. You are on a uh, different we're level. <laughs> no, we're, we're all learning from each other. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, that's that's the thing. I mean, don't 
miss an opportunity to learn from anyone uh, that you meet and that's what we're saying that the more you know people the more the more you learn from them yeah? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Hassan. I, uh, if you You're can welcome. send me You're your welcome. website or how, so that we will, uh, after I upload this on YouTube, I will share also your website or how okay. uh, a way for people to reach you if they have any all questions. Right. All right. All right. We'll share we'll share the details with you and uh, we'll, uh, for posting. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Magda. Thank you this very was much, Hassan. Very, it was a pleasure being here and it was uh, uh, really nice uh, uh, seeing you. It's been uh, a while, and hopefully, once this COVID uh, <laughs> issue goes away, um, hopefully we'll be able to meet in person again. To meet in person, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Hassan. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. You yeah, too. Bye.